I'm currently balancing my camera on a Cheeto. Is that weird? Alright, so I down tune the strings a ton. I've always been into super like hardcore, maybe like post hardcore metal ish, so. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty hectic. Clutch, close your ears. Good morning to you. <laughs> okay, so something, actually okay, this is gonna be a little personal. It's something about my personal life. I actually recently, I have stopped drinking and I have uh, started working out every day. And man, I tell you what, I feel amazing. Like I feel so good. I felt so good every single day lately and I hope that it's like, maybe you're like reflected in my attitude in my videos, but I'm telling you what dude, I just feel really good. It's really awesome. Whew, okay, we left a little bit of a mess. I spent my, most of my day yesterday off camera cleaning everything up. Okay, four more wheels to add to the collection, which thankfully I should be getting rid of like four of these pretty soon. And one thing before we get going, 53 Supply, our clothing company. We've been really slow to do drops and stuff this year, but we've been working really hard. We actually hired a, uh, a graphic design team that is gonna be doing some stuff with us. And here's one of the designs that we've got coming out. It's gonna be really cool. We've got a few more shirts. We've got lots of stuff coming up and we're gonna be aiming for the uh, beginning of May to be dropping. So. Make sure you guys get ready for that. We haven't done a drop in a while, so if you guys are supporters of the 53 brand or uh, you know your advocates for mental health and stuff like that, because that's what we support, I advise you to get, I advise you to save up and get ready for this drop because it's gonna be so good. Okay, so one of the first things we have to do, aside from laying the car down, is we have to take some stuff out of the engine bay. So I got the harness, got the battery, uh, the horns and things like. Oh, oh, um, <clears throat> we have to take. Okay, I'll just tell you in a second. Before we super clean this thing up, we've gotta take like the little things out. We gotta take the AC, uh, well, we can't move the AC condenser and the AC unit itself, but we have to, we have to get as much of this out as possible. So, like, I can probably go ahead and like, remove these little hoses and get them off. Those are just heater core lines that go into there. Technically, I don't need to take off the entire harness. I could just like set it to the side. Which might be a better idea, I don't know. But I'm gonna take the battery out, I gotta take these little these little fluid dilios out, which they're <laughs> kind of falling out anyway. So I'm gonna get everything cleaned up. Uh-oh, yikes. Oh, that's power steering, yikes, don't like that. After that, I'm gonna spray it down with degreaser, I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding if it needs it, I'm gonna power wash it, and then uh, definitely gonna make sure I cover up the VIN plate though, do not want that to be painted over. I'm gonna tape everything up, cover everything up, and then today we're gonna be painting the engine bay. I want this to be a nice, clean sort of look. Okay, so I've got the engine pretty, mostly disassembled. I'm gonna have to like tape over these lines. I don't want these lines to be, um, you know, all nasty, but uh, I can probably go ahead, actually I probably could go ahead and move this, this little, uh, whatever this is right here. So I can move that ground and stuff like that. But uh, now that I have mostly everything, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and degrease the engine bay. I'm gonna go ahead and use my degreaser. It just, <laughs> actually, let me show you, cause it's really fun. Oh, wrong door. Hello. So it's just like, it foams and it's really fun. I'm gonna do a couple coats of this. And uh, what that's gonna do is it's gonna take all the grease, all the oil, all the nasties that this motor has emitted over the years, and uh, it should take most of it away. I'm gonna do a couple coats of this. After I do that, I'm gonna power wash the entire thing, and it's gonna get everywhere in my garage, and all my cars are gonna get dirty, and it's gonna be awesome, but I'm gonna power wash it. Ooh, this is gonna be nice. Like, oh my God, it's just gonna, you have no idea. Once it's all power washed, all this stuff should be like super, super clean. <laughs> it tastes pretty good. <laughs> Let's go ahead and move the R33 so we don't get nasties everywhere on it. And I'm just gonna say it, we messed up. We messed up by only removing one muffler from this because this RB sounds so good. Also, I know I've been saying a lot of things and going on a lot of rabbit trails lately, but I want to let you guys know I finally found R33 GTR fenders, and I'm ordering stuff from all over the world, from Russia, 
there is a kit that replicates the Autech GTR four door, and I have over fenders that are coming for this. So we are 100% going to be making a four door GTR with a little bit wider booty and body, a little lower offset wheels. This thing's going to look great. Oh, it's already looking better. Or am I, am I just crazy? Maybe I'm just crazy. I think maybe it's not. Guys, so I have a, a degreased power wash at least twice now. So, you know, soaked, power wash, degreased, all that kind of stuff. Wiped it hella, hella, hella down. I've de actually, I've probably degreased it like three or four times. I wiped it down more and more uh, with a degreaser every single time, and actually, it's looking really, really, really nice. But next move, I'm just gonna take my Scotch Brite pad and just do a light scuff on the paint so that there's some stuff so that we can actually get some uh, some paint to stick on this. So I'm gonna keep going at it. There's a, there's a couple spots that still have. Little bit of grease still on it, but as long as I sand it, it's got a really good surface, it's gonna stay there. But like parts like way back here, even if it does for some reason ever come up, um, not a huge, huge deal because uh, you're not really gonna see that behind the giant LS3 sitting right here in the middle of the engine bay. Time to start taping everything up. I've got a lot of stuff to prevent overspray. I'm gonna make sure I, I cover the bottom here, make sure the hoses get all this, cover the transmission and stuff like that. So I'm gonna try and basically, uh, my, my goal is to, to spray about until right here to the transmission tunnel. Cause you're not gonna see any of that. I really just am focusing on getting, making this a nice looking area, this a nice looking area, and just making it one color. Everything seems to be pretty good and rough to the touch, which is definitely a good thing. I'm gonna do a little more sanding before with like a 600 grit to make sure it's really just a good surface for everything to stick on. So I'm trying to make it look as best as possible and prove to you guys that stuff like this can be done in your garage. Especially if I can do it, you guys can do it too. 20 minutes later. I wasn't ready for it. A, uh, an F-150 just like um, tried to race me? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know why trucks always like see my car and they probably think it's a ricer. Yeah, he got the hit and then it was no contest from there. Like, looked like he didn't even move. It looks like it wasn't even accelerating itself. Anyways, that's funny. I always forget to record, I always forget to record stuff like that. It was on a track though, you know? So this track. Two will be enough because they didn't have any more than that. So I've been really bad about doing time lapse this video. I've been taping things up, trying not to get a bunch of overspray everywhere. So basically, I'm just trying to make sure that all everything that I'm painting is what I you know mean to be painting. And I actually have a little bit of black down. I wanted to make sure that the paint actually stuck to it and looks like it's having zero issues at all. Okay. Ooh. It's gonna be a nice clean white. So, whenever you're painting stuff like this, you wanna make sure you maintain a pretty decent distance away from it. I have to admit, the first little spray I did was, <laughs> was actually way too close. But yeah, you wanna maintain like, it would be like six to 12 inches away from it. You wanna do like really even coats. A lot of people like, there's a lot of people that do really bad jobs of painting for two reasons. For one, you get a little too nozzle happy. And the reason you want that to happen is because it just runs and it looks gross. Another reason why is because people get too close. And aside from like paint prep and stuff like that, I think that one of the Biggest reasons, honestly, is because people don't take their time and they don't do even simple layers. What you don't want to be doing when you're painting is going, oh, oh, yeah, oh, that, that looks really good. Oh, yeah, let's go ahead and just keep on doing that. Like, that was a good example of what a horrible job is. What you want to do when you're painting is just like, simple. It's like, oh, I missed a spot? That's fine because I'll go back next coat and I'll get it. But you just want to do some really simple, like, really simple lines. It's really super easy. Like, simple. Simple, far away, simple. Let it just go ahead and grab on there. The paint's gonna grab onto it, and it's gonna dry. And then once it dries, you're gonna go back over it, and then you're gonna continue to fill in. You're never going to finish painting the first go through. You wanna make sure you're taking your time and you're just doing a really good job at it. Go 
ahead and tear everything off and reveal it. Gotta be re I'm still gonna be really careful. Oh yes, it's already looking nice. All right. <laughs> this engine bay is actually so bright that uh, it's hard for my camera to even focus on like uh, yeah, this is awesome. I'm really excited how this turned out. I actually hung out with some friends last night, so I wasn't able to finish the video. It got super late, so I wanted to go ahead and pause it back today. But here's the finished product of the engine bay. It's kind of crazy. It's like super, super bright. I'm really excited. It'll make a really, it'll make a really nice, clean look. I need to do a, a couple touch-ups. I've gotten everything on except for this little cover right here, which is fine because I need to get all the ECU stuff out of the way anyways. For what it's worth, it turned out pretty damn good. One thing I want to say. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop into the engine bay for this. You heard of the one Jay-Z swap, but now you got a one Evan, one Fat Daddy swap. I know that the LS swap is not everybody's cup of tea out there. I, I realize that it's not the most unique thing, and it's not the coolest thing ever. A lot of people are very excited about it, but it's also very mixed too, so I wanna make sure, like, if, if you're stoked about it, I know, that's okay. I obviously like to stay unique and do things people don't usually do. That's why I own an R33 four-door. That's why I own an SC300. That's why I own an Evo 10 instead of an eight or a nine. I personally like to be unique, but sometimes the answer to life is not to be different, it's to do things that have been proven to be right and proven to work. So I genuinely am excited about this build. I know I say it all the time, we're gonna have the motor pretty soon. And this is just gonna be a clean, easy, good build that I've been wanting to do. And then after that, I'll continue to do the unique, crazy stuff. So to end this video, I always do daily advice. I'm actually gonna give you guys a challenge today. It shouldn't be any surprise to you that it is so incredibly easy to be negative. Negativity is usually what drives conversations. It's what brings people together, unfortunately. Like, think about it. It's so much easier to have a rambling conversation about griping about someone, something, this song, this person, this movie. Like, it's easier to critique and it's cooler to be negative than it is to be positive. And I want to encourage you guys to run from that, to flee from that. I want to challenge you to not like, don't, I don't want to force like cringy positivity because that's never good. But positivity comes when you push negative negativity out and then it'll naturally come out you don't have to like always go around being like oh it's such a good day I love God bless up it's not always like that but I challenge you to flee from negativity get away from the people that are constantly negative because they will negatively impact your life I, I challenge you to see how difficult it is to generate conversations around positivity, around positive things. You might find it pretty difficult, but it's a challenge I want you guys to accept today. Anyways, uh, I never even told you guys, but I'm trying to get this done before the the last weekend of May. Lone Star Drift Round 3 is a pretty big event. Uh, like, Nari is gonna be out there, Adam's gonna be out there, I'm pretty sure Taylor may maybe be out there. I'm going to be out there, and my goal is to have this car ready by the end of May. And uh, if all the sponsors and stuff pull through and I can get like a wiring harness and stuff made, um, this car will be 100% functional out there. If not, I will be drifting my SC300 either way, but it'll be in Houston. So if you guys in Houston, I would love to see you guys out there. I'll probably be really nervous, but <laughs> it's all right. Anyways, I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. And I'll catch you guys later. Be positive. Bye. Two videos for you today. Boys, I got two videos for you. Click on one of those two videos, okay? I dare you. You won't. You won't do it. Actually, I'm, I'm serious, like, you should do it. You should actually watch one of those two videos, or both. Or any other video on my channel, for that matter.